Hi, this is Sandy Rios of Sandy Rios 24-7. Thank you for joining us. We're doing the video version of the podcast, and it's just kind of fun. It's a, you know, something new for us. I've done camera a ton in my life, but not on the podcast. So it's nice to have you join us in this way. We're at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Orlando, Florida. It's beautiful down here. And I have another star sitting next to me. I can't, I, I just, I'm, we're drawing stars at the booth today. His name is Joel Divas, sir. Is that correct, Joel? Did that I get is that correct. Right? Do I get a star? That's Dutch, right? It is Dutch. Give you three so, stars. Thank you. So, where are you from? I'm originally from Michigan. And, uh, Grand Haven or Holland or? Holland. See, well, I know these things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in Atlanta now. Okay. All right. I, I used to do a lot of work with the Bible League, which was all Dutch. And they used to, you probably don't even know this. And they used to, my Dutch friends would say, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. Yeah. You ever heard that? I, I've heard that a few times. Did they make you marry a Dutch girl? Uh, they, they tried, <laughs> but it, it, it failed. So my wife, wife is not Dutch at all. I have to tell you a funny story. One of my best friends was married to a big, tall Dutchman. He looked right, right, right off a movie set, blonde hair, swath of blonde hair. And uh, when they were engaged, his, mo his grandmother took her into a bedroom to talk alone, and she said, oh, Catherine, do Baptists believe the Bible? Yeah, that was his Christian Reformed grandmother. <laughs> so, well, you can comment takes, on that. Takes all kinds, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's just but funny. Yes, I'm sure they do. Dutch culture is very strong. I don't know if people yeah. know that, but they're very cold. They, they're so successful. They have such a rich history, which I'll, I'll get off on a tangent if I go on this, but I have great respect for, the, for what the Dutch people have accomplished, and I mean that. So, but there I go, news of politics and world events, which is not we're about. Uh, let me just say, Joel is an actor. Uh, he is uh, nominated his movie for Comedy Film of the Year, and that uh, the movie was is Game Changer. Now I'm at a disadvantage, Joel, because I haven't seen it. Is it about what? Is it about gaming? <laughs> no. <laughs> it is about basically about baseball. It's kind of the Sandlot meets Mighty Ducks. Um, I play a very self-centered, a little self-absorbed professional quarterback. I get in trouble racing my Lamborghini. So if you like fast cars, your little 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 boy's gonna tune in and watch a Lamborghini race. And uh, then I get forced to coach a little league baseball team, which I really don't want to do. And the hilarity ensues. That sounds like fun. You know, heaven knows we need a fun movie. There aren't enough of them. So you're up for best. Comedy film? Yeah, comedy film of the year. Okay, yep. that's here at National Religious Broadcasters, so that's cool. Even to be nominated, you know, is a great uh, privilege. Have you acted before? Yes, um, I've been, I started on camera around 2005, um, and at that point in time, uh, it was professional, uh, uh, or it was professional wrestling, sports entertainment. So I went from running around kind of in my underwear on live TV in front of a live audience to scripted stuff where I have a little more control over, <laughs> over what happens. You get to choose the underwear or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did them too, at least, thankfully. But uh, yeah, it's uh, so that's kind of what, what made me dive into entertainment, especially stuff that can relate to families and children. Yeah. Do you have kids? I actually don't, so. Okay, so still to come. Um, Joel, there has to be a story. You don't move from pro professional wrestling. That's a whole fun, interesting world, but you know, not known for, uh, let's see, uh, the values that you might, Christian I don't know, I'm guessing <laughs> that you might adhere to now. Yeah. So I, I'm sure there is a story there. Can you tell us um, the short form of how this life change came to you? The, the short form is by being able to go back to venues um, I started to meet fans that had taken, you know, pictures with me with their kids and they would come back up and, and try to get me to autograph, you know, their actual pictures, not ones they bought. And I would have parent after parent after parent uh, tell me how happy they were that there was a character that their, you know, their sons and daughters could look up to because at the time I played a character that wouldn't cheat. And so whether I got hit with a chair or a baseball bat or whatever else happened to me, I would never take advantage of that. You know, when the ref conveniently wasn't looking, I would never cheat. I would always overcome it with athleticism or outworking the guy or just not giving up. And it was a visually uh, attractive character to the audience, but also was able to relay a very strong moral message. 
And after enough parents kept telling me over and over about how their children could just see me doing the right thing, I started to realize that that's what we need to concentrate on in film and TV, showing Jesus, showing the right moral decisions, as opposed to uh, more telling and more traditional preachier content. And that's what made me walk away, amongst many other things, um, led me walking away from sports entertainment and into launching my own TV and film production. When we talk about trying to be encouraged in the world in which we live right now, I just want to say I'm not on the team that uh, shames the church for what they're not doing. I, I can see that people uh, are rising up all over in all kinds of areas uh, and taking a stand and fighting back in their own way. And uh, Joel, that's how I see this. I see what you're doing is that. So you wrote and produced The Game Changer, right? I did, yeah. All right, but now are you working on a new one? Our TV series or something, tell me. Yeah, we have a new TV series that's coming out. We're shooting the pilot presentation for it right now. It's tentatively called Encore, though that could change. And it should be wrapping up about the second week of June and we may be putting it out in a venue where people will be able to see the pilot presentation for free and give us feedback and comments about the, uh, the current state of the show and future direction and also give us a better idea of where we want to go and how we want to distribute it. Because once again, we're specifically trying to get this show out to reach non-believers with a very fun but yet deeply dramatic show that dives into very topical issues, specifically that teens and families are facing today with a very clear Christian moral worldview, but not in a traditional Christian style show. Oh, so, so to be clear, can they see it now or it's in, in the process? We're, we're still filming it. So we got about two more weeks yet okay. and then another week or two to wrap it up. And uh, mid June ish, mid to late June, it should, uh, should crossing fingers because. Film and TV doesn't always go like you plan, but uh, that's when we hope to have the pilot presentation done. All right, so it sounds to me like you're really busy because I see here that you're also shooting a pop. Is, the, is Encore something different? That's what we're working on right now. Okay, um, And All then, right. yeah, I've got, I've got another project kind of in the works as well at the same time. I so thought somebody told me that. So you never ending busy. cycle. Does your wife, is she involved in the business? She helps out um, when it when it works for her when she when she when it's fun for her I guess because she's uh, she's done plenty of long hours where it wasn't a whole lot of fun and she's <laughs> like look let's you know go hire other people for that so um, but yeah she's very supportive um, I've been averaging seventy five to eighty hours for the better part of about nine years and in, in getting all this going so if she wasn't supportive. <laughs> We'd be in trouble. Yeah, um, be. So yes, uh, she's 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 very helpful in what she uh, what she can do and uh, fills in with other areas when needed. If you were to win tonight for Game Changer, what would that mean to? What would that mean? Uh, not just about. I'm not talking about spiritual. I'm actually talking about just technically. You know, could more people see the movie? What, how would that affect the future of the movie, Game Changer? Yeah, I think that I think you know the big thing for that would be is a it would be additional confirmation for me um, that I'm on the right path, and you know uh, things that can be made better on future projects in relation to everything that happened with that film. Um, but also the big the big win for us would be as if it grows not only that film but this show and all of the future films. Because our ultimate goal is to create as much content as possible to reach as many people as possible, and that's very hard to do. All right, well, this has been Joel Div Divisser. 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 Uh, the big Dutchman. He used to do pro wrestling <laughs> and got us led into writing and producing and acting. Uh, and he's nominated again for Comedy Film of the Year here at National Religious Broadcasters, and we'll find out tonight. And of course, by the time you see this, we'll already know. But. So there you go. Thanks for listening. This has been Sandy Rios, 24-7.